Aegis combat assist activated. Systems green. Hello, YouTubers. This is the Nubifier. I've recently invested a significant amount of my personal time into playing with the new flight model. YouTube is just a side hobby for me, so whenever I'm testing or researching, it's at the cost of something else in my personal life. I say this only to reinforce how passionate I am towards the community and how important it is for me to present the information based on my own research and not hearsay. My background in Star Citizen has been mostly focused towards dogfighting, as I find that specific part of the game very enjoyable. I've watched the game evolve further away from space combat, however I hope eventually I'll enjoy it again. I'm going to start today with a very basic overview of IFCS, which defines how flight behaves. I've linked a detailed overview of IFCS from John Pritchett, who designed it in the first place. The goal of IFCS was to simulate mass, inertia, center of gravity, momentum, and thrust. Achieving this would provide a perfect simulation where firing a missile or losing a wing would change the mass and realistically change the flight. Losing a thruster to damage or overcharging a component in a time of need would also give the pilot choice. This way, scale and being familiar with the systems allowed a good pilot to be greater. The 3.5 flight model now adds atmospheric effects such as drag and will consider lift and gravity in the future. These can be seen as modifiers to the core flight mechanics and are going to be explored in their own video. Spaceflight has changed significantly by changing the throttle and how thrust is delivered. The sweet spot for combat known as SCM is still there, but it's up to the pilot to operate above or below that speed limit. Just like driving a car on an icy road, if you drive beyond your grip limit, you may not have the required traction to achieve the desired line. The further you operate above the ship's SCM threshold, the less maneuverable your ship will be. The extra inertia is beyond what the thrusters can handle. That can still be desirable as choosing speed over maneuverability will allow the pilot to quickly break or achieve enemy contact. As long as your speed is below the red section on the indicator, your craft will behave more maneuverable. There are three components to consider. The speed limit toggle, which activates or deactivates a speed cap. The variable limit, which either raises or lowers that speed cap, and of course the pilot input. These three decide how coarse or fine your ship thrusters behave. Having a very low cap may help performing delicate maneuvers, such as docking or landing. The speed limit toggle will let you switch between limited and maximum quickly. By default, this is set exactly at SCM, and I have it within easy reach bound to my controller. When active, the ship won't accelerate beyond the target speed on the left side of the heads-up display. When disengaged, IFCS won't limit and the pilot can reach whatever the ship's maximum speed is. The pilot can choose a higher or lower speed target, mine is bound to the mouse wheel on my left stick. Heat is another factor. Cumulative course changes when coupled at SCM may compound the heat produced and eventually cause overheat, damage, or shutdown. IFCS when coupled will always try to make the ship fly in the direction that it's facing when you have the throttle applied in a forward direction. Adding afterburner will greatly improve the performance, but it costs more fuel and it'll add even more heat to the equation. You can quickly change angle without adding most of the heat if you're decoupled. Decouple can be used in short bursts to keep an enemy targeted without generating a bunch of heat but you might quickly drift out of position. I have decoupled bound to a momentary switch, meaning as long as I'm holding it down, IFCS won't alter my trajectory. I can aim and it keeps the heat down. So, dogfighting and flight in general can now be seen as balancing heat against your desired vector and attitude. You need to be more skillful to master, and I believe that this will make the skill split in dogfighting even wider than before. Regardless of what you've heard, I don't believe the new flight model is the death of the joystick. I found having granular control over the ship is now even more critical. I'm far from being done testing, however I'm quickly going to break down some of my binding choices and explain my current configuration. I'm currently using a delt on my left hand and an MT50 CM2 on my right. Left Y is bound to throttle forward and backwards, and then I inverted it in main configuration. Left X is set to yaw. Left twist is up and down which will come in handy for manual takeoff and landing. Left trigger stage 1 is afterburner. Left trigger stage 2 is missile lock and missile fire. The button below the trigger alternates chaff and flare at the rate of 1 per half second. As long as that button's held down, the craft is belching countermeasures. Speed limit is adjusted by the mouse wheel. View zoom is adjusted by the Y axis on the mini stick. My right hand is pitch and roll like an airplane. I have up, down, left, right bound to a hat switch. Speed limit toggle is the button directly above that. And the brake lever is set for brake. Other systems like powers and shields aren't bound yet, and I haven't started testing the external throttle. I've only been testing the flight model in dogfighting, but I will be updating this in the future as my bindings evolve. Between you and me, 
It's obvious I'm not a developer, but I don't actually know what the end goal of the flight changes were supposed to achieve. Some think that it was to make flight easier. Just bombing around? Sure, but I think space combat got even more complicated. Some think that it was done to make combat slower so that turrets can be a bigger part of the game. Whatever the reason, I feel that I'm enjoying dogfighting a little bit less than before, but I'm continuing to practice to see if I just need some time with it. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. The testing for this type of video is very time consuming and if you got something out of it, please help me get the information out by sharing it with a friend or org mate. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section. It does help. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.